Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a shamanic practitioner, energy healer, transformation coach, and I'm the head of the Transformation Center CT based in Westport, Connecticut. So in addition to our individual sessions that I offer in coaching and healing, at the center, we also have a variety of classes and trainings, workshops, um, all sorts of things that are here to help you discover who you really are and let go of who you're not. So we can do that through the healing, the coaching, all of the classes. So you can check it out on our website. I'm gonna put up the contact info here, the Transformation Center. Let me see if I can find it, there it is. Yeah, so it's Transformation Center CT, which is for Connecticut.com. And you can reach us through the email or that's a text or phone number. And we have a couple of things that are regular every month we offer on the second Tuesday of each month, a shamanic clinic. And this is a great opportunity to learn a little bit about shamanism if you're not familiar with it, because it's a 30 minute session and you get to pick the time between 6.30 and 8.30 PM. And you're assigned with an individual shamanic practitioner. So you get to go to your little breakout room on Zoom. Oh, this is on Zoom, by the way. So you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. So you can check out that on the website and anything else that's coming up. We do have special events every month that, that change every month. So that's that. And again, welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show, which is something I started a few years ago because I just love the idea of connecting with people, finding out what they're up to, and also allowing you as a viewer to find out what's in it for you you know, learn about their spiritual journey and see what they're about, what they have to offer. So I'm excited that tonight my guest is Anne Barham. Welcome to the show, Anne. Thanks, Katie. I'm really delighted to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy you are too. You know, we've been trying to get together for, for a few weeks now. <laughs> and I met Anne recently um, and she, she'll, you'll find out more about her in a minute. I'm going to read it, but she recently moved to the town next to me. So that's how I got to, got to meet her. And I'm going to put up her contact info and there it is. And I'm going to just read a little bit about her. So Anne Barham was a licensed marriage and family therapist, and she was in California for over 25 years. She has specialized in past life regression therapy since 1998. She guides clients into their own unconscious memories of prior lifetimes to rapidly resolve long-standing issues in many areas, including personal relationships, emotional challenges, limiting beliefs, phobias, questions about life purpose, and spiritual exploration. There is so much available to us in that area. And she has a fascinating book and there's a little um, photo of it there on the slide. It's called The Past Life Perspective, Discovering Your True Nature Across Multiple Lifetimes. Wow, sounds amazing. And that book was published back in 2016 by Simon & Schuster. So Anne continues to help clients from all over the world with remote sessions from her new home in Fairfield, Connecticut. So welcome to Fairfield County, Anne. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a lovely place. Yeah. Good. Well, we're glad you're here. And as you know, I always like to, to start um, by asking my guests, just tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey, You know how you got to where you are, really anything you want to share about that, please. And how many hours do we have? <laughs> so. Um, Let's see. I was raised Roman Catholic, which never worked for me. Um, and at about age 13, right after I got confirmed, I told my parents I wasn't going to go to church anymore, which was kind of radical for me because I was very much of a um, goody two shoes child, you know, straight A student, do what's expected, but it just didn't work for me at all. And um, I started doing a lot of reading about other religious traditions, other belief systems. And when I came across the concept of reincarnation, 
in um, more Eastern traditions. For me, it was like, oh, absolutely. This just makes so much sense. So it was something that just totally resonated for me. So I continued to do a lot of exploration in my youth and um, gosh, had my own sessions, did um, a variety of different kinds of spiritual experimentation, um, ended up at a certain point in my life um, traveling to Egypt. A couple of times I had a very strong connection with ancient Egypt and had some pretty amazing experiences there. Um, also studied with a really gifted channeler in Southern California for many, many years until his death, which really helped um, develop my own understanding of the cosmology and why we're here and what's the purpose of running around on this planet anyway. And, um, and then at a certain point, actually midlife, decided to become a therapist. I had uh, been in business. I'd been a computer programmer. I'd been very left brain for a lot of years and um, got, as I call them, the billboard from God that I should go back and get my uh, master's in counseling psychology. So I went and did that and um, wasn't quite sure, you know, what I was going to do with it. Uh, but figured, well, I might as well go get licensed. That's the standard path. And then about mm, five years after being licensed, I was like, okay, and what else? There's something else here I'm supposed to be doing. Another billboard from God just popped in like, oh, you could do past life regression work. I'm like, really? Okay. How am I going to get trained? My daughter was two years old. I didn't want to leave her at the time. And what happened was the um, two world renowned um, past life therapists, Dr. Brian Weiss and Dr. Roger Wolger, both came to retreat center a half hour from my house, each did week long professional trainings within six months of each other. So clearly, it was the universe saying, you go girl. <laughs> right? Wow, that, that is so, so amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got into the regression work. And it's a very um, significant part of my whole spiritual journey, because I really do feel called to be doing this work and really helping people understand the breadth of our reality and the fact that we aren't just this human having a spiritual experience, but instead it's the opposite. We're a spiritual being having a series of human experiences from which we're learning and growing. Mm, yeah, it's really, it's comforting, isn't it? Yeah, well, for me it is certainly. And I think it is for most yeah. people that I work with to be, to be really yeah. get that perspective on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, right. no, I agree. So were there any, so you, you were, were kind of drawn to this. It sounded like from an early age in terms of the past life aspect of it. Was right. there anything in that you discovered in the work that you did um, initially about yourself and past lives that was particularly helpful in any way or illuminating or anything like that? Well, at certain junctures, when a particular question or issue might come up, um, I will go and do my own regression work sometimes if I have the sense that, oh, this is something carried forward. Um, so what I've found often is when there's something going on that seems related to a prior lifetime, even if it's a physical issue or something like that, that it's usually also connected <clears throat> excuse me, to some sort of emotional thing going on currently. Hmm, yes, so that's yes. usually what very often what activates the um, carryover from the prior lifetime is there's something up in your current life that's kind of pushing that little sore spot and causing something to emerge that you might not initially put that two and two together, but then you mm -hmm. find out after all that they were connected. Um, <clears throat> So for instance, one of the, the regressions that I received when I was in graduate school um, had to do with, I had some problem with my feet where I'd had to have surgery on my toes and they were problematic. I did a lot of sports and it was a problem for me. And 
in the regression, I went to a lifetime where I was a, a young Asian girl. My feet were bound. I was very rebellious about the whole thing. Turned into a big disaster. But um, the element that was interesting and related to my current life at the time had to do with feeling um, disrespectful of men who were in authority positions. And that was something that at the time was also kind of up for me. And so it turned out that that was a big component of that prior lifetime was I was rebelling against the patriarchy, against my father who was very prominent and, and all those issues. And so it was just very interesting to see how that kind of thing could then pick up a physical issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how they were connected. Yeah, they fed into each other. So at that stage, how, so by doing the past life regression, that allows you to go back and heal that um, lifetime. So it affects you now, or how does that work? What is the process? Yeah. So um, we, we go into the lifetime and depending on what our objective is. So if we're just going to explore, we're not ne necessarily looking for a problem or if we're mm -hmm. going for spiritual exploration, it's different, but let's say we have an issue with someone in our life that feels like it's so enduring, everything we try, it doesn't work. If we go back and look for the origin of in a prior lifetime where we were with that individual before and see what the dynamic was then and look for essentially the unfinished business, be it emotions that weren't processed or communications that weren't done or some kind of trauma that was not healed, we're able to then do that work and release that, heal it so that the person is no longer really carrying that unfinished business. Instead, it's resolved, it's put to rest and it can mm -hmm. actually really help catapult you forward in your current life because you're not carrying that unconscious baggage with you any longer. So mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. yeah, essentially how it, how that works. Yeah. Yeah. And the amazing yeah, thing so is it's so rapid because it's usually one session and we're done. Whereas it might be an issue that you would work on for years, perhaps in conventional therapy, looking for a solution to this thing. And it turns out, well, mm -hmm. you need to really go back to where it started, which happened to be in a prior lifetime. Right, right. No, that's, uh, I love that because it is, it, it gets, it's very direct, gets you right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to explain um, for our viewers, like what the process is, how you get somebody there? Like, is it a hypnotherapy type of situation or, or what? Yeah, it's like, it's like a very light level of hypnosis, or you could just say a deep relaxation. What's really fascinating is these memories are actually fairly close to the surface for a lot of people. So, um, you know, I'll spend 10 or 15 minutes doing this relaxation. I'll do sort of a bridge to take them into the prior lifetime. And then they just start usually getting some kind of images. For some people, instead of an image in their mind's eye, they'll get just a known sense or a feeling, or they'll know what the story is, even though they're not quite seeing it. However, it comes through, it's valid, it's just different for different people. And then I anchor them in that body and personality in the prior lifetime. And we um, go see where they live and we meet their family if they have one. And then we move through the key events of that life. So I'll just jump them forward, just go to the next significant event where something important happens or something significant changes and boom, they go there. And they start describing, oh, here's what's going on. There's a big fire, or the, you know, the house is burning down or the town is burning. I don't know where my family, whatever it is. Um, work through all the way to their death and go through that transition of death. And then after the death, we are hanging out in that spiritual space where we will essentially do a life review. What were the important lessons from that lifetime? How does that lifetime impact you now? What are the themes that are the same or different? And then we also will call in some higher spiritual guidance and ask for some guidance from that arena, um, which at times can be very profound for people. 
at other times they'll just get the rea just a lot of reassurance about you're loved, you're on the right track, just keep doing what you're doing. Other times people will get total course corrections from that spiritual guidance. Um, and then we, you know, kind of wrap things up, chat about it a little bit afterwards to, you know, kind of get everything grounded. And, and it usually is about a two hour process. Yeah, wow. Sounds like a beautiful experience. Yeah. Yeah, I try to I haven't very actually much have it, it complete, you know, complete experience all in and of itself. So it's not that gee, put a bookmark there and we'll come back next week and finish it. We never do that. It's like we finish it up in um, in the session. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense to do it that way because whatever whatever learning is there, they can they can have it right there. It's, it's you know, available rather right. than putting it yeah. off. Yeah, no, I, I love the way you describe it. So is it, um, I mean, it sounds like like anybody could do this pretty much, right? Yeah. Pretty much, it's, it's fascinating. Some of the best um, or most interesting past life stories come from people who are very skeptical. <laughs> so when I was promoting my book more actively, I did a lot of, I would flew out from California to New York to be with my publisher and we would have all these um, regression sessions set up with journalists. And many of them were young online New York journalists, right? So they're out to prove themselves and they pride themselves in being really skeptical. So they'd be like, I don't even think this is going to work. And they would have these most amazing sessions, you know, be like their eyes practically popping out of their heads when we were done because they were like, oh my God, I had no idea. <laughs> so it's really fun sometimes to see how, um, even if you're a skeptic, now, if you are absolutely 100 convinced that this is not going to work for you, then it probably won't because that's like anything, you know, right? If you walk into it and you're mm, like this, it's not going to happen, then it won't. But as long as you have a little bit of, um, of openness and let's see what comes up. Yeah, the very, very large percentage of people um, are successful in retrieving prior lifetimes. And usually the ones that don't, which is just on occasion, we will go to something in the current life, which is really the origin of what they're asking about. So it's something from present lifetime that actually needs to be cleared up. So with all my counseling background, I, you know, I can work with whatever comes up. So um, it's fine either way. And they're, you know, if that's what they need, I always figure the client, the client's higher self knows exactly where they need to go. So I just, I'm just there to guide and follow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is so true. In fact, I was gonna was gonna ask you about that. You know, it it is that like as a coach or as a what you do, it's it's really we're just there to guide and and they're doing mm -hmm. the work. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So are they communicating pretty much um like you're just talking the whole time, pretty much they're they're awake enough to come. Yeah. Be so we're Right, exactly, which is why they can't be a, in a real deep level of trance or anything, or they would be like, God, would she stop asking me these questions, right? <laughs> so, so it's pretty light, and we go back and forth, and I'll direct them places, ask them questions. Um, some people, it's kind of fun, because sometimes the prior personality comes through, even in the way that the client communicates. So, for instance, um, one time I went, I took a client, she ended up in a lifetime where she was a, um, a cowboy riding the range and in the old west and checking the fence lines. And this cowboy would spend months at a time just with his horse and the cattle. And trying to get information from that personality was like pulling teeth. So I really was, I was getting answers like, yep, nope. You know, it was just, total, like someone who never thought. <laughs> that was really very funny. And then another time, um, there was a client that went back to a lifetime as um, part of the Medici family in the Italian Renaissance. And he was carrying on about how we have to bring art and culture to the people and just on and on and on, just volumes. And it was so much fun, but just to see the difference in the personalities coming through pretty accurately um, when we're in the session. Yeah, right. I haven't even thought about that. I mean, it's like you can't make this stuff up, you know? <laughs> no, you really can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love 
I love that. Yeah. So they're just um, going back to where who they were, and that's that's what's coming through. Exactly. Right. Basically. No. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, one thing you mentioned a little bit um, ago was about how you can travel with, like, in this lifetime, you're with people that you were with from another lifetime. So whether right. it's your yeah. immediate family or anything like that. And that's my understanding is that we travel with souls that we're, you know, close with, or I don't know, how, how would you describe right. it? Well, we kind of use the term our soul group. So these will be like the key other individuals that we have a very strong love connection with and that we like being on the planet together. Um, so we will change the aspect of the relationship lifetime to lifetime. So it might be in one life we're husband and wife and in the next lifetime it's parent and child. And the next lifetime it might be business partners, but we tend to wanna keep showing up together. Occasionally we'll show up in a very conflictual relationship with each other because we've agreed that we're going to be the cutting edge by which each other grows. So that we're wanting to really learn how to deal with conflict in a positive way so that we end up, you know, this is a person I really am gonna butt heads with this lifetime actually ends up being someone who's very important in my soul group and that I've had very close relationships in the past. It's just this time around, we've decided to do this for each other. So, but wow. it's um, very, very common. So we're, we're always identifying that with my clients as if a significant figure shows up in the prior lifetime, we always pause and see if we can identify it as someone that they know now. And sometimes it'll be a cousin or, you know, a coworker or something like that. And they're just showing up as a more important person in the prior lifetime. It just comes and goes as far as the closeness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's that's really interesting because yeah, and the and the studying that I've done, it's we call it the monad group. Our soul group okay. is a monad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, okay. you know, yeah. because you probably um also agree that as a soul, we do come um incarnate to learn certain lessons in each lifetime. Is that mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think we almost can't be here and not learn lessons, right? right. But um <laughs> I think. I think the bottom line is we're really here to see if we can bring the perfection of the divine into physical form on the planet. I think that's our overall goal. And we have a long way to go. But when I look at it from the perspective of, of the way people treated each other in the Middle Ages, we actually have made a lot of progress. It's, you know, when you have to take that long view. But um, given that, a big piece of our journey is just to really enjoy being on the physical plane, being in a body, creating joy, creating connection, that kind of thing. In the process of doing that, we end up having to learn a lot of lessons because this physical plane is so challenging that a lot of negativity gets in our way. So there's our opportunity to learn these lessons that will help us ultimately evolve into a much more loving, better society. So mm -hmm. that's my that's philosophy in a nutshell. <laughs> I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. thank you. For that. I love that description. Thank you. You know, also I'm curious, um, I think you'd mentioned that your practice is evolving a little bit and there's some new things that you're interested mm -hmm. in trying can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that sure yeah there's there's something i ran across that i'm pretty excited about um so there's a trauma reduction technique called emdr eye movement desensitization blah 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 which most people know as the finger wag where you're doing a bilateral stimulation of the brain by holding your head still and watching something go back and forth. Um, and that's been used for some years now for trauma, particularly they started using it in um, military veterans and things like that who'd seen a lot of trauma, had, have PTSD. So um, I came across a fellow who took that technique, modified it slightly and then took it a step further. So after you've gone through this EMDR to reduce your trauma and grief, he actually was able to induce 
what's known as after death communication in his clients where they are actually feeling like they are communicating with someone who has passed. It could be a loved one. It could be the guy they shot in Vietnam. It could, you know, could be the buddy who got blown up next to him. Um, but that they had such an intense experience of communication with that person who had passed that the client would be absolutely convinced they were not imagining it. It was not a hallucination. This is real. And it would be very life-changing for these people. So um, I heard about that and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. This is up my alley. I really want to learn more about that. So um, I'm going to be doing some training with them um, in the beginning of February. My idea being we should be able to do that not just after processing a ton of trauma. The average human being should be able to get to the place where they can communicate more directly with, with people who have passed because they are all there. And it's just, they're in a different state, but communication is possible. So I, I'm seeing this as something that I might be able to, to you know, take to that next level of making it be something where the average human being can actually learn to do this or have that experience instead of having to go to a psychic and having a psychic tell you, oh, your mother's here and she wants you to know she loves you and she's fine. But you instead, you yourself would feel that you had communication, communicated with your mother and had messages back and forth. So that's yeah. kind of the, the arena I'm going to go play in now. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds like a great idea. I mean, that would be super helpful. And to have that more direct communication, like you said, not have mm -hmm. the, the medium as the media, right? Just right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I get that. And it's definitely available to all of us. And I think that it's a matter of, um, yes, first learning some techniques, if you will, but, and then mm -hmm. just practicing because, you know, I've, I've definitely taken courses in this and it's, I mean, literally anybody can do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it is just believing it right? Yes. That, that yes. it is possible we can do this and that trusting the messages that you get. But apparently with this technique, it's so vibrant that people don't question it. So anyway, I'll have fun with that one and see where I go. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I look, I look forward to um, hearing about that after, after you do it. Yeah. Is, mm -hmm. is it close by or do you have to travel very far? Um, well, he, he's doing the training remotely as okay. so many of us do these days. So yeah, I get to do it from the comfort of my home. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, well, we have another like about another minute or two left. Um, is there anything else that we did that I didn't get to ask you that you would like to share about this work, why it's important? Um, you know, what people should... Well, I, maybe the thing I'd like to, to put out there is just that I'm noticing in the past couple of years, I'm getting more and more younger folk that are really interested in doing this work, really questioning, um, very much looking for their life purpose, which is something that we can go after with this too. Um, and um, so that's really encouraging that, you know, to think of being able to get this kind of information at a younger age instead of when you're in midlife or later is so helpful clear all that out and then move forward more freely. So I'm very encouraged by, by seeing that happening, that um, younger yeah. people are really starting to embrace this. And yeah. No, that's right. terrific. And, and I see that also in the work that I do, you know, any, any spiritual work, any um, coaching, you know, mm -hmm. also the shamanic healing, a lot of, a lot of young people don't have the barriers to it that perhaps our generation was, was brought up right. with, you know? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. And that and the, yeah. just with the state the world's in right now, a lot of questioning. So yes, a lot of questioning. So yep. here's Anne's contact info again for those of you who'd like to check it out and learn more about pastlives.org or contact her at that email address or buy her book. I guess it's available everywhere, right? <laughs> It, well, yeah, it, I mean, go to Amazon, you'll find it, that's for sure. You can get it from my website, I think barnesandnoble.com, those kind of things also, yeah. Thank you so much for being here today. And Thank you. And it was a real pleasure talking with you. All right, take care. Bye Thanks, bye. I enjoyed our conversation. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.